Hello friends, welcome back to our channel, Neat Biology Expert, I am Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying Class 12 Biology, Chapter Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. In this particular lesson, we are going to study about outbreeding devices. So, let's see what is outbreeding devices and what are the different types of outbreeding devices. Okay, so we know that in majority of the plants, they have the flowers of the type hermaphrodite flowers. What is hermaphrodite flask? So, a flower which has the both male and female part. Andrisium gynisium. If both these parts are present within one flower, that is called hermaphrodite flower. Majority of the flowers of the angiosperms are like this. Okay. So, look at this flower. Here, this flower has here this female region. Right. So, this is the stigma the female region and it has male region the stamen okay which has the anther so when the anther produces pollen grains when the male part produces the pollen grains okay so the pollen grains go and get deposited on the stigma so here what happens the flower gets pollinated through self-pollination so here self-pollination is what exactly occurring so, when a flower is having both and female characteristics, the anther produce the pollen grains and they go and pollinate the female region. Okay, self-pollination occurs. But majority of the plant species, they don't want self-pollination because there are many disadvantages in the self-pollination. So, when a self-pollination is occurring generation after generation, so what happened? The plant will have inbreeding depression. It will undergo depression and its genetic character won't be improved. Okay. So, they need actually genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is an essential factor for evolution. So, we know evolution, right? So, for an evolution to occur, actually for every species it needs evolution for that it needs genetic diversity there must be some recombination exchange of genes must be there so if a plant is always uh, producing pollination through self-pollination so 100 percentage it will be same like as the planet so there won't be any genetic recombination so plants they actually don't encourage self-pollination they want cross-pollination okay so, for that, the plant, they have some techniques or some adaptations to exhibit cross-pollination even though they have hermaphrodite characters. That means even though they have male and female character within one flower, they don't like to have self-pollination. They want cross-pollination. Okay. So, plants develop many devices to discourage self-pollination and to encourage cross-pollination. Those devices are called as outbreeding devices or we can say contrivances of cross-pollination. Clear? So, here devices means you, you should not think about some equipments. They have some adaptations that we are actually calling as devices. Okay? So, adaptations of cross-pollination we can say. So, look at this picture here. Here, this is also a hermaphrodite flower having both male and female character and this flower is also having both male and female character. So, this anther produce pollen grains, okay. So, rather this pollen grain pollinating its own stigma, this flowers, they actually want this pollen grain to pollinate the another plant stigma, another flower stigma, okay, of the same species of course. So, this is called actually cross-pollination. This will be executed by pollinators like wind, abiotic and biotic agents of pollinators, okay. So, plants want cross-pollination. So, for that, they have several adaptations. So, that they are called as outbreeding devices. So, the first one is unisexuality or dicliny and second one is bisexuality or monocliny. So, in this bisexuality, we have several subdivisions that is Dicogamy, hercogamy, and hetero style. And the last one is self sterility or self incompatibility. So these are the different contrivances of cross pollination a plant adapts. Okay. So let us see what are all this one by one. So the first one is unisexuality. So by the name itself, we can say what is uni? Uni means one. Okay. 
So if the flowers are unisexual, that means if the flowers are either male or female, not hermaphrodite type, okay. So their self-pollination is not at all possible. So only cross-pollination is possible, right. So, some plants, they adapt this mode of adaptation. They produce only one type of flowers, either male or female flowers. Or they have male or female flowers in different, uh, uh, male or female flower reproductive organ in different flowers. Okay, not in the same flower, within one flower. So, that is one adaptation. Okay, so unisexuality has basically two types. One is called monoecious and another is called dioecious. You may be knowing this, right? So, what is monoecious? If the male and the female flowers are present on the same plant, that is called monoecious. See, the male and the female part are not present within one flower. They are present in one plant, but in individual flowers. So, a plant has a male flower and also a female flower, individual flowers. So, such type of plants are called monoecious plants. Such type of flowers are called monoecious flowers. Okay, so example for this is coconut, bitter gourd, castor and maize, right. The second type is dioecious. What is dioecious? Male and female flowers are present on different plants, not within one plant. One plant has completely male flower, another plant has completely female flower. So like this, if a plant has only male or only female, so such type of plants are called dioecious plants. Okay, so example, Boracus, Papaya, Jade Palm and Mulberry. So, these are the example for dioecious plants. So, let us understand this some more using this picture. Okay, so look at this first picture. This is a bisexual flower or hermaphrodite flower. This has both male part and female part. So, here what will occur? Here 100% self-pollination will occur 100 percentage self-pollination will occur okay now plants they don't want self-pollination they want to encourage cross-pollination so for that they are undergoing some adaptation so the first adaptation is being monoecious what is monoecious the plant in a single plant the male part the male flower is different and the female flower is different clear so, male and female flowers are different. So, when the male flowers are producing pollen grains, they come and pollinate the female flower. So, this is a type of adaptation to avoid complete self-pollination. But here you should remember, this is not 100% cross-pollination also. Because it is occurring within one plant, right? So, this is actually, we call this as Gitonogamy. Gitonogamy. What is Gitonogamy? Pollination occurs between male and female flowers of the same plant is called Gitonogamy. This is neither a self-pollination nor a cross-pollination 100%. Okay, clear? Some plants adapt this method. And the third one is this picture. You see here, this is a dioecious plant. So, one plant has only male flower and another plant has only female flower. So, what happens here? The male flower producing pollen grains which will be transferred to the stigma of the female flower of another plant of the same species. So, here pollination occurs through agents, wind or insects or birds through the agents. So, 100 percentage which pollination occur here? 100 percentage cross pollination occurs here. Correct? So, in dioecious plants, both autogamy and ketonogamy is prevented 100% cross-pollination occurs. So, this is actually called as unisexuality. The second type of adaptation is dichogamy. So, what is dichogamy? In a bisexual flowers, the anther and stigma, they mature at different times. So, here this adaptation is occurring in a bisexual flower. The flower which has both male and female region. But... The anther and the stigma, they mature at different times. There is a time lapse between these two. Okay, so when there is a time lapse, what will happen? So when the stigma is ready, it's open. But the anther is not uh, matured and it is not releasing pollen grains means. So how the pollen grain will come and fall over the stigma? So then self-pollination is prevented. Understand? And same, imagine, if a flower is there, the flower is having a pollen grain released out, whereas the stigma is closed, it's not mature. 
So where the pollen grain will go, it won't able to fall on its own stigma. So those pollen grains will be carried out by the pollinators to the next plant. So again here, self-pollination is prevented, cross-pollination is encouraged. So this type of adaptation is called as dichogamy. Okay, right. So see, this dichogamy is having two types. The first one is called protandry. Protandry. The second one is called protogyny. Protogyny. Same. Easy, but terminology is slightly different. Okay, so what is protandry? In this type of adaptation, the andrisium matures earlier than the gynesium. That means the male part, the stamen matures earlier than the female part. Okay, so example for this is in the plant Helia, the sunflower, and in Clerodendrum. These are the important examples for protodandry type of adaptation on the other hand we have the second one protogyny gyny means female right so in this type the gynesium the female part it matures earlier than the andrisium so example for this is scrofularis and mycelia these two plants so let us understand this concept using this picture look at the picture at your left this is the protandry so look here, the center part, this is the stigma which is closed. So when the stigma is not matured, it is not in a receptive stage. It could not able to receive the pollen grains. Okay. So the stigma of the flower is closed, still not matured. Whereas the anther, if you see anther, it produced enormous amount of the pollen grain. So this pollen grain could not able to sit on the stigma now because it is closed, not matured. So here, this pollen grain should go to the next flower stigma so that's how the self-pollination is prevented and cross-pollination occurs okay on the other hand the other type is protogyny what is protogyny here the stigma is now is receptive it is now opened up mature so it wants to receive the pollen grain whereas if you see the male part the anther it is still in an undeveloped stage so it won't shed any pollen grains so there is no chance for the pollen grains to come from its own flower. So of course it has to receive from the another flower of the same species. So that's how this cross pollination is encouraged and self pollination is prevented in this dichogamy. Now the third type of adaptation is hercogamy. So what is hercogamy? This is also occurs in the bisexual flowers. So, in a bisexual flower, the sex organ, the male and female part, that is the stamen and the stigma, they are arranged in a such a way that the self-pollination will not occur. Okay. See, this is an adaptation in a bisexual flower only. But there is a mechanical barrier in between the stigma and the stamen. So, whenever the pollen grains are released, it won't able to reach its own stigma. Okay. Understand? So, otherwise the pollen grains will not be received by the stigma. So, that's how the self-pollination is prevented and it depends upon cross-pollination only. So, what happens here? A natural mechanical barrier is present in between the two sex organs. That means the male and female sex organ to avoid the contact of the pollen with the stigma of the same flower. This is highly important. A mechanical barrier is present. This is important in between the uh, stamen and the stigma in the hercogamy. Okay. So, then they depend upon the pollinators, wind or insects for its cross-pollination. Okay. So, that is called hercogamy. So, example for this is a very, very important example is calotropes and hibiscus, these two flowers. See here, this is the calotropes and this is the hibiscus flower. So, what happened here? So, this calotropy, this has a pentangular stigma. Like this five. Five stigmas are there. Okay. So, this is position above the level of the anther. So, that's how the height of the stamen and the stigma differs. And similarly here, you see in the hibiscus, you could appreciate better. So, hibiscus, these regions are the stigma. Right. Female part. So, the stigma is just above whereas these are the male part that is the stamen so which is below so whenever the stamen releases the pollen grains the female part is above so it could not able to reach top so here cross pollination only occurs self pollination is prevented okay 
so let us understand this using this picture okay so look at this picture the first picture for self pollination to occur in a hermaphrodite flower that means a flower with a both male and female character the height of the stamen and stigma should be equal see here this female part this pink color the stigma and the male part and the they are of same height so when they are of same height only okay so whenever the wind blows the pollen grain released and they reach the stigma otherwise they have a uh, connection whenever the wind blows what happened one falls over the other that time pollination occurs so to encourage pollination or uh, for a successful self pollination the height of the stamen and stigma is very crucial it must be of the same height okay clear so when they are of same height only what happens self pollination occur self pollination occur now the plants they don't want self pollination they want to have cross pollination so to avoid self pollination what adaptations they are taking they are just changing the height of either stigma or the stamen okay so that's what we are seeing here so look at the picture second picture this picture so in this plant okay see here the style uh, sorry the anther the height of the anther the stamen is tall whereas the height of the stigma is short okay and similarly look at the third picture in this picture the height of the stigma is tall whereas the height of the anther that is the stamen is short so when this stamen release pollen grains it could not able to go and uh, reach the stigma like this because wind won't flow from downward direction right so it needs of the same height so like this the plants the flowers they make some adaptation so that kind of height difference is actually called as hercogam so in this we have to understand something called pollinia what is pollinia pollinia in singular form we call this as pollinium what is pollinia or pollinium pollinia is a coherent mass of pollen grains in a plant we know that where the pollen grains are produced they are produced in the anther when we take a cross section of the anther they present the microsporangium the bag like structure which develops the pollen grain and it ruptures out and releases the pollen grains right so when the anther ruptures thousands of pollen grains will be released but what is pollinia pollinia is a mass of pollen grain here these pollen grains are present but they are not present as an individual pieces they are present as a mass a bulk group that structure is called pollinia understand so they are the product of only one anther but they are transferred during pollination as a single unit so here as such the whole pollinia should be get transferred during pollination so example for this type of pollination is orchids or callotrophis this is orchid flower and this is callotrophis okay see here see when we talk about a normal pollen grain it will be like this right but here pollinia is this one it occurs like a group structure okay so here if you see the structure here present within that many pollen grains so it as such comes out together okay so in the orchids you could see here a drop like structure like a drop like pair of drop like structure this yellow color that is the pollinia of the orchids so this pollinia won't rupture whenever an insect look here a butterfly is sitting on the orchid so when it transfers or when it helps during the pollination means it takes up the whole pollinia look here the butterfly is carrying the whole pollinia in the legs and put it in the stigma of the another flower okay so as such the complete pollinia is getting transferred so this is a peculiar structure which occurs in certain plants like orchids and callotropis the next type of adaptation is hetero style hetero hetero means what different different okay style means the height of the stamen and the stigma are of different sizes so that is the meaning for that terminology hetero style okay so what is hetero style some plants they produce two or different forms of flowers that are different in their length of the stamen and style see we have seen this is an hermaphrodite flower that means has both a male female part and they must be of the same height so only if the stamen and stigma are of the same height pollination occurs which pollination self pollination occurs the anther will fall over the stigma and it 
encourages self pollination okay so to avoid this the plants now are taking some adaptation that means they are changing the height of the style and stigma so in the previous hercogamy type of adaptation we have seen either the flower uh, style will be tall or the stamen will be tall either one adaptation they will follow now what is this heterostyle heterostyle means here the plant produces three or two different types of flowers they are of different height okay so the pollination will occur between the flowers of the same height stamen and the stigma so that will be done through pollinators through insects or through wind only okay you understand so this type of adaptation is called heterostyle so here in the heterostyle the pollination will takes place between the organs of the same land this is important okay so let me explain you this heterostyle is having basically two types one is called diastyle and tristyle so first let us see what is diastyle diastyle is a type of heterostyle okay so what is diastyle in diastyle the plant produces two types of flowers listen carefully the plant produces two types of flowers see here one plant is here and it produces one type of flower and another plant is there and it produces another type of flower this is the diastyle these two types of flowers are not present within one plant same species of the plant right so they produce two different type of flowers and those plants they usually habit they inhabit in nearby places to encourage cross pollination they live in a nearby region okay right see the plant produces two forms of flowers one flower is pin long style short stamen small pollen grain the another flower is thrum eyed short style long stamen and large pollen grain very simple look at this picture this is the example for diastem two flowers are there i said two different plants of same species produce due two different flowers so one flower is called long style look here the style is there right so this red color region one is having a long style and this region what is this the male region right the male region is short the style is long whereas the stamen the stamen is short stamen is short right also the anther produce here the pollen grains are small this is the different small pollen grains clear okay? so this type of flower is called pin flowers pin flowers we say this as pin flowers another type of flower produced by the another plant is this is called thrum eyed flower thrum eyed flowers okay the name is just like this so what is the difference here look here here the female region the style the style is short the style is short whereas if you see here what is this this is the stamen and anther the stamen is long stamen the long stamen and the pollen grains produced by this long stamen are of big size big size clear so in this type of flowers the self pollination will not occur let us see how see here this blue color region is the stamen to receive the pollen grains but in the same flower the pollen grains are produced by the anther which is at a lower level see pollen grains are here so how the pollen grain reach on the top of the stamen it is not possible even through wind it is not possible so self pollination not occur so here see here the stamen is long so the anther is at the top it releases the pollen grain whenever it releases the pollen grain it won't come down and fall on the stigma like this understand because the flower won't be fully opened also so in this condition also self pollination not possible so how then pollination occurs it is through cross pollination so if a butterfly or an insect is sitting on the uh, long stamen and takes the pollen grains then it carries to the stigma of the same height generally they sit on the same height plant okay so that's how the cross pollination occurs in this heterostyle diastyle type of adaptation so an important example for this is primula that is we call as primrose this is an important example the next type of adaptation is tristyle 
So what is tri style? In this type of adaptation, a plant produces three different types of flowers. One plant produces one type of flower, another plant produces another type, another plant produces another type of the same species. They live in a single habitat. So pollination occurs between these three flowers. So that's how the cross pollination is encouraged. So such type of adaptation is called tri style. Okay. So example for this is lithrum. Lithrum is a very good example. This is a sweet pea family plant. Okay, lithrum. So what is tri style? Look at this picture. So here number one, this is a normal style that means here the female part is there this is the style this is of normal length okay this is of normal length and at the left side this is a long style see here a style is there it is of long length okay height it is much taller than that first one and the third one okay so here the style is there the female part is very short I understand so this is first this is second and this is third. So three different height style. Similarly, the male part, the stamen, it is of also different height. You can see here it is of also different height in each plant, each flower. Okay. Now the pollination, you know that the basic principles of pollination is it will occur at the same height stamen and stigma. So, this plant, okay, so for example, this plant, okay, is producing an anther, uh, pollen grain. This will pollinate this style, long style plant. Understand? It will not pollinate here, like a short style. This will not occur, okay? And similarly, for a short, short stamen, a short style with a short stamen, this will be pollinated by a plant having a short height anther, produced pollen grain so like this you could see here the pollination occurs between the style and the stamen of the same height so this type of adaptation is called tri style so the last type of adaptation is self sterility so what is self sterility just this is a genetic mechanism which prevents self pollination that means from the same flower or the flowers of the same plant also that means gitonogamy also from fertilizing the ovules by inhibiting pollen germination or the pollen tube growth in the pistil. Very easy. Okay. So, for example, if you see here, this is a, this is a style, okay, with the stamen and here having the anther, anther, okay, right. So, this is actually present in one, actually present in one flower. So, it must be genetically safe. Right? Genetically same. What is genetically same? The female part and male part will be genetically same. So, when the anther releases the pollen grain, this stamen will not allow the pollen grain to germinate. That means pollen tubes will not be formed. You know, one leaf after germination, fertilization will occur. Okay? So, this stamen prevents the germination of the self-pollen grains. Okay, so this type of adaptation is called self sterility. So this is also called as self incompatibility. So this occur in many varieties of plants like abutilon, passiflor, that is passion flower, tobacco, potato, apple and grapes. So when the pollen grains from its own flower comes, this stigma won't allow it to germinate. Whereas when the pollen grain from a different flower of that different uh, plant comes it allows it to germinate that means it is enabled or enhancing the cross pollination clear yeah? so let us understand this using this picture okay so see here there are three pictures one two and three okay right so this is what is this this is the style this part okay so in the style this is how we s1 and s2 this is allele of the plant genetic uh, uh, combination allele of the plant if a plant is of the allele s1 s2 for example okay so if a pollen grain is also s1 and s2 it won't allow the pollen grain to enter inside or do uh, pollen tube formation or germination so this is prevented that means the alleles the same allele pollen grains will not be allowed to germinate okay see here another example a plant is of s1 and s2 so, when a S1 type of pollen grain is coming, that means the pollen grain from its own anther is coming, it won't allow. 
Whereas S3, it is written S3. Could you see? S3, another type of pollen grain, another genetic combination pollen grain is coming means then the stigma allows it and it allows the pollen grain to form pollen tube. Okay, clear? And see here, third picture here, S1, S2 is a genetic combination. So, here completely different pollen grains, S3 and S4 is coming. So, 100% all the pollen grains will form a pollen tube and start germinating. So, like this, the plant won't allow its own genetic pollen grain. So, this is called as self-sterility. So, let us revise what we have learned so far in this lecture. We learned about what is outbreeding devices. What are the different types? Okay. What is outbreeding devices to prevent self-pollination and to encourage cross pollination? Even a bisexual flower, they have certain adaptations. They are called as contrivances of cross-pollination. Okay. So, they are unisexuality or bisexuality. Under bisexuality, uh, it is dichogamy. That means protandry or protogyny. What is protandry? The maturation of the male, andrisium first. Protogyny means maturation of the gynesium first. Okay. And hercogamy. Hercogamy means the stamen and stigma are of different height. And heterostyle. Heterostyle means the plant produces flowers of different height, stamen and stigma. It could be of two different heights that is diastyly or three different heights that is called tristyly. And the last one is the pollen grains of same genetic character won't be allowed by the stigma. Okay. So that is called self-sterility. Self so these are the different types of contrivances of cross-pollination. So I hope this lecture is clear for you. Our next lesson will be about pollen pistil interaction. So, if you like this lesson, like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel, Me Biology Expert. Thank you.